The C-SPAN networks bring you long-form public affairs programming from the nation's capital and are a public service of your television provider. C-SPAN, created by cable. Well, I would now like to introduce our witness for today's hearing. The Honorable Kathleen Sebelius is the Secretary of the Department of Health and Human Services. She was appointed to this position in April of 2009 and was sworn in as the 21st Secretary on April 28, 2009. So I will now swear you in if you would rise. Uh, as uh, Ranking Waxman and I just discussed, the committee is holding an investigative hearing and when doing so have had the practice of taking testimony under oath. Do you have any objection to testifying under oath? And the chair now advises you that you are, uh, 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 see, I, I will now read you, uh, the, do you swear that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? You are now under oath and subject to the penalties set forth in Title 18, Section 1001 of the U.S. Code. You may now give a five-minute summary of your written statement. Welcome again, and thank you for being here. You got to use that mic. You don't know how many people want to hear you this morning. <laughs> Thank you, Chairman Upton, Ranking Member Waxman, members of the committee. I left my position as governor of Kansas four and a half years ago for the opportunity to continue work I've been doing for most of my over 35 years of public service, to expand the opportunities for all Americans, regardless of geography or gender or income, to have affordable health coverage. During my years as a state legislator, as an elected insurance commissioner, as head of the National Association of Insurance Commissioners, and as a two-term governor, and now as HHS secretary, I have worked on that effort that I care deeply about. There are still millions of Americans who are uninsured, as well as underinsured. People who have some coverage at some price for some illness, but have no real protection from financial ruin and no real confidence they'll be able to take care of themselves and their families if they have an accident or an illness. And for them, a new day has finally come. In these early weeks, access to healthcare.gov has been a miserably frustrating experience for way too many Americans, including many who have waited years, in some cases their entire lives, for the security of health insurance. I am as frustrated and angry as anyone with the flawed launch of healthcare.gov. So let me say directly to these Americans, you deserve better. I apologize. I'm accountable to you for fixing these problems. And I'm committed to earning your confidence back by fixing the site. We're working day and night and we'll continue until it's fixed. We've recently added new management talent, additional technical expertise, and a new general contractor to identify, prioritize, and manage fixes across the system in two broad categories. Performance, which deals with speed and reliability, and function, which deals with bugs and problems in the system. Our extensive assessment has determined that healthcare.gov is fixable, and I want to just outline a couple of the improvements we've made to date. We now have more users successfully creating accounts. We can process up to 17,000 account registrations per hour, or nearly five per second. Instead of some of the users seeing a blank screen at the end of the application process, they can now see whether they're eligible for financial assistance and make more informed decisions. Because we've improved performance, customers can now shop for plans quickly. Filtering plans takes seconds, not minutes. Users are getting fewer errors and timeout messages as they move through the application process. And the system has been strengthened with double the size of servers, software that's better optimized, and a high capacity physical database, which replaces a virtual system. The chairman referred to outages this weekend and again yesterday. And I would suggest to the committee that if you read the statement of Verizon, who hosts the cloud service, it is the Verizon server that failed, not healthcare.gov, and it affected not only HHS, but other customers. We still have a lot of work to do. We have a plan in place to address key outstanding issues. It includes fixing bugs in software that prevented it from working the way it's supposed to, and refreshing the user experience so folks can navigate the site without encountering error messages, timeout, and slow response times. And by the end of November, 
We are committed that the vast majority of users will be able to review their options, shop for plans, and enroll in coverage without the problems way too many have been experiencing. But consumers are using the site every day and continue to do so, and problems are being solved. But we know that we don't have a fully functioning system that consumers need and deserve. We are still at the beginning of a six-month open enrollment, which extends through the end of March, and there's plenty of time to sign up. And just to put it in perspective, the average open enrollment for an insurance plan is two to four weeks. The new marketplace has a 26-week open enrollment, and those who enroll by December 15th will be able to access their benefits on day one. Even with the unacceptable problems with healthcare.gov, which we are committed to fixing, the Affordable Care Act, by any fair measure, is working for millions of Americans who are benefiting from new health security, young adults, Americans living with pre-existing health condition, seniors on Medicare. The 85 percent of Americans who already have health coverage are protected with new rights and benefits. The 15 percent of our neighbors and friends who are uninsured have affordable new options in a competitive market and cost growth for health care is lower than it's been in years. Millions of Americans are clearly eager to learn about their options and to finally achieve health security made possible by the Affordable Care Act. And my commitment is to deliver on that promise. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.